Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Briar Hengdahl Windwalker. Depending on who you ask, either last weekend or this coming weekend, or maybe even next Monday, is Vesak. And I was originally going to, to speak about something else this week, but I, I've decided to, to change that and talk about Vesak because that is my introduction really to Buddhism. Um, the first encounter I had in the, the background image here is or was at one point anyway, the, uh, the altar and shrine of a Theravada Vihara uh, where I first encountered that. The celebration of monks and teachers and priests and lay people from all around the world with lanterns and flowers and incense to share and talk about the Buddha, his birth, enlightenment, and nirvana and the impressions that that left on me were pretty profound and they're things that i still think about from the experience of of what that was and you know there there were the uh the people handing out the the little cups of curried vegetables and conveniently, right next to them were other people handing out little cups of fruit and ice cream, which I quickly realized was to help you recover from the curried vegetables. And there was this giant, impressive kettle of tea boiling with entire cinnamon sticks and vanilla beans in it. But one of the things that struck me in the midst of all that is everyone was smiling. Everyone in the in the different robes or or just the lay person's white. Different languages, different countries. The the common denominator was was the smile, the bow, the welcoming. And so, of course, because it was this celebration, we heard all the stories about the Buddha. We sat and listened to the histories. We sat and listened to the Dhammachaka Satipatthana, to the Parinibbana Sutra. The beginning of Buddhist teaching to the end of Buddhist teaching. The middle path, the eightfold path, the four noble truths, interdependence. And in a 50 year period, many of these were repeated in his last days. And yet everybody smiles, and these are serious matters. As we always say, these are the fundamental matters, the fundamental point, the supreme issue, birth and death, and what happens before and during and after. It's, it's not avoidance, certainly not, because we're told to meditate on death, on corpses, perhaps our own and on all the nasty things within us. And it's certainly not eternalism. There's no promise that we're going to achieve something or other and flowers will rain upon us for all eternity as we remain unchanged. And it's not hippie navel gazing and it's not sitting on a log sobbing because all of life is suffering. And it's not going out and partying because all of life is suffering, so you may as well have a good time, live fast, die young, leave a good looking corpse. It's none of these things. It's serious. And yet we speak of the most serious matters. And we smile. And if you've never sat in meditation, and had something come up out of the wells and the depth 
of who you are as a person that didn't shake you to your core or make you sob or make you embarrassed or ashamed, I'll challenge that you've probably never sat. But we keep smiling. We keep laughing and joking. So how can we look at all of this? How can we look at all these concepts and all these difficult emotions and all these teachings and just keep smiling? Because what we're taught, part of the path, part of the, the, uh, the bhajanga, the insight factors, again, from the Theravada teaching, one of them is joy. In the midst of all of this, in the face of all of it, we express our joy. We express our humanity. We express our Buddha nature. We express our compassion for ourselves and each other. We express joy at that flower that's here blooming right now that I'm not twirling in my hand. And so we smile and we just keep smiling. Just like Buddha and Hotai and Thay and maybe even Mona Lisa, we sit down and we stare directly into the face of ourselves and our lives and the world in which we walk and all of the troubles and all the sufferings and the causes and the conditions and looking for the the cessations of these causes and conditions, and we keep smiling. And in the final words that the Buddha offered, after instructing his followers, after living through his last days, after exhorting them, even when he was gone, not to feel that they had no teacher because they had his teachings, his final words, his final teachings should sound really familiar because Dogen carried them on. And we carry them on today now at the end of our service every week. Very, very similar. Now then, monks, I exhort you, all fabrications are subject to decay. Bring about completion by being heedful. That was his final advice. Keep working. Things change. Things decay. Keep working. And so we sit and we adopt our posture and we listen to the Dhamma and we share in the Sangha and we face all this and we smile.